Hello everyone, my name is Wilson Wang and I'm from ByteDance Infrastructure Computing Team. Today I'm going to present the performance improvements in SD 3.5 release. As we know, uh, SD 3.5 uh, release in mid-June, it has a lot of new features and bug fixes and performance improvements. And today, we will cover some of the important performance improvements in this new release. Before we start, let me first cover today's agenda. The first part is a brief introduction to AskD, and the second part is about the problems and optimizations in AskD 3.5. Uh, the today we're just going to cover two of them. The first one is about concurrent read transaction. The second part is about inefficient warning log. And after that, we will cover the performance change in uh, 3.5. And then after that, we will mention the new benchmark command that we added to ActD repository. And finally, we will uh, talk about the ongoing and future work that we are planning to do in the future. Now, let's begin. First, a brief introduction to ActD. What is ActD? ActD was introduced in 2013 by CoreOS team. It is a distributed KV store which provides strong consistency. It is using Go language and the algorithm it uses is Raft consensus algorithm. Its best fit scenario is when you have more reads than writes in your database environment. Here, the graph on the right side shows how a ActD cluster looks like. The Raft protocol that is running on each of the ActD cluster node behaves like a state machine. It changes its state based on the message coming from other peers. In ActD, it is a sing using a single Raft. The Raft entries apply in uh, first in first out order. Also in ActD, it support multi-version concurrency control, which is MVCC. There are two important data structures for supporting MVCC. The first one is key index. Key index is a B tree data structure that has the mapping from key to versions. And the second data structure is BoDB backend. BoDB is also a simple B plus tree data structure that maps versions to key value tuple. So that with these two data structures, when you have a key, then the key will be map to a particular version and using the version later you can get into BoDB and find out the exactly which value you are looking for so that in this way multi-version concurrency control is supported. Finally, there's a war log which is write ahead log. Write ahead log is mainly used for data recovery in case of failures. Now let's talk about some of the important ActD APIs. ActD clients talks to ActD server using gRPC. There are five important unary gRPC calls we need to pay attention here. The first one is put, which basically put a key to ActD server database. And the second one is range, which can be used to read one or more keys from ActD server database. And so one delete range, which can be used to delete either one or more keys from ActD database. Then the fourth one is transaction, 
which is basically a mix of read and write operations in one single transaction. And the fifth one is compact, which can be used to compact the current ActiD database. The stream gRPC call watch is also very important. ActiD client use watch to watch all the key value changes in ActiD server database. In Binance, ActiD is widely used to manage different Kubernetes clusters. Our ActiD cluster sizes continue to increase beyond 15,000, with an average of 8,000 nodes among top 20 clusters. The reason we have these huge clusters is because of the co-location of Kubernetes and YARN tasks. Is it possible that we will have super large Kubernetes cluster with 20,000 or 100,000 nodes in the near future? So, ActiD performance is one of the important factors that limits our Kubernetes cluster size. To meet our ambitious goals with super large Kubernetes cluster, we need to resolve some of the problems in earlier versions of ActiD. Now, let's talk about the, some of the optimizations we have in ActiD 3.5 to improve the performance. In the first part, we will cover concurrent retransaction. What is concurrent retransaction? Concurrent retransaction was introduced in ActiD 3.4. It is used to avoid holding read mutex so that the write transactions will not be blocked. In this way, the concurrency can be improved. With concurrent read transaction, the ActiD read write latency can get significantly reduced by around 90%. However, ActiD throughput get reduced due to TX read buffer deep copy. TX read buffer is one of the few in concurrent retransaction data structure. It holds a list of sorted key value pairs that are not yet committed to the story yet. We observe that the Kubernetes API server throughput in ActiD 3.3 is actually higher than 3.4 because of this TX read buffer deep copy. In this graph, we are showing the throughput difference between ActiD 3.3 release and 3.4 release. The taskbar we have is a cluster with 5k nodes. We are running a scheduler that will schedule 200 k pods in this cluster. As we can observe from this graph that the 3.4 release has much lower throughput than 3.3. Although with concurrent retransaction, the 3.4 release has a lower latency than 3.3, but the throughput is much lower. In order to improve the concurrent retransaction performance, the first thing we did here is do no TX rebuffer copy in transaction call. Transaction call uses concurrent retransaction for read-only operations inside transaction call. Even if the transaction call operations contain write operations, a read-only concurrent retransaction is always created. Each of the new concurrent retransaction gets a private copy of TX read buffer. This is very costly. So the solution here is as the read only operations execution is very short, we use retransaction instead of concurrent retransaction in transaction call. 
here on this page the right side is a set of graphs that are showing the performance improvements when we were using retransaction instead of concurrent retransaction. The subplots in, in the top is actually mostly write operations. The subplot in the bottom is mainly read operations. As we can see here, with different combinations of read and write operations, the performance improvements can be different. But generally, from the graphs we can see, the transaction call throughput can get improved to around 2.7 times the original performance. In each of the subplot, the x axis is the size of the connections from the client, while the y axis is the size of the value that we are saving to the database. As we can see from the first one, when we have more clients coming and also larger values for the key V to store, then we will get higher performance improvements. Now the question is, can we further reduce the overhead of TX3 buffer deep copy? The answer is yes. How do we do that then? Well, the solution is to share the TX3 buffer between different concurrent retransactions. As we mentioned before, concurrent retransaction each has a deep copy of private TX rebuffer. However, when there's no write operations happening between different concurrent retransactions, the data they are holding is actually the same. So here we made the changes so that the different concurrent retransactions, when there's no write in between, they will share the single TX3 buffer so that we don't have to copy the TX3 buffer each time when you're creating a new concurrent retransaction. Here on this page, we're actually showing the performance improvements when we were sharing TX3 buffer between different concurrent retransactions. The graphs shown here is very similar to the one before. And the subplot on the top has higher ratio of write operations, while the one at the bottom has a higher ratio of read operations. As we can see, with this new change, transaction call throughput can also get improved. And the maximum that we can get is around 2.2x. Now, let's talk about the inefficient warning log problem. ActiD server needs to print out the warning logs. Sometimes, the warning log need to print out the size of the gRPC message by calling portal.size. However, when you are making call to portal.size, it actually needs to marshal the whole message before knowing the actual size. This is very expensive. So the so solution here, the first one, is to use gRPC message types size instead of the portal.size function call. So that the it will directly return the size of the message instead of marshal and calculate the size. Second, if you cannot use the first solution then avoid calling portal.size 
in warning log function if this log is not going to print anyway. So in this way, you will not do the marshal call and save CPU time. The first solution is done by Chow from AWS. And uh, here is a link to his pull request. In the description of the pull request, we can see the message uses can reduce up to 50%. This is a great improvement. And in solution two, solution two is done by us from ByteDance. And here's also the link to our pull request. With our solution, XD throughput can increase another around 4%. Okay, now let's talk about the new benchmark command we contribute to XD repository. ActiveD repository contains a tool under the tool directory, which is called benchmark. Benchmark tool contains several commands, which can be used to test different aspects of ActiveD. It has operations such as put, range, transaction put, watch, and so on. However, in ActiveD, we don't have a straightforward way to test the mix read and write operations. In real world environment, it is common to see mix read and write operations sent to ActiveD. So in order to measure the performance in the mix read and write environment, we added a new co uh, benchmark command in ActiveD. Here it is linked to our pull request. Besides, we also added a Python script, which can be used to compare the two different benchmark results and generate the graph. So that from the graph, we can see the difference between different branches. Here on the right side, it is a plot of the performance difference between two different ActiveD branches. The first column is the performance of the first branch. The second column is the performance of the second branch. And the third column is actually the difference between the two. Here, the different rows means different read and write ratios. Now, let's talk about the performance. Here in this page, we are showing the graph of comparing the memory and CPU usage of 3.5 versus previous versions. In the script that we are running, we are actually running mixed transaction operations. And the mixed transaction operations contains different lengths of key and values. We can see from the result that with the same script running, the CPU usage and memory usage of 3.5 is actually lower than previous versions. Please note that in this graph, we don't have the full length of 3.3. Uh, the, the result of 3.3 is very similar to 3.4. Because of we don't have enough sites to show them, so here we just display part of the 3.3 three performance. In the last part, we're going to talk about the ongoing and future work. In order to evaluate ActiveD cluster, we need Kubernetes environment. 
However, we cannot have a full setup of Kubernetes each time when we are doing evaluation. So how do we resolve this issue? We propose a new dump and replay feature to the community. With this new feature, we can dump client gRPC requests to a file and later replay it on another XTD cluster. So that later we can compare the performance difference between the different clusters. We're also working on further improvements in different XTD components. The first one is watch. We know that the watch performance can get significantly affected when we have a large number of clients doing the watch at the same time. Is there any way we can improve the performance here? We're actually working on that. The second is Marshall and unmarshal. Clients send messages to server and the server will do a lot of marshalling and unmarshalling on these messages. However, many times we're actually doing some actual marshalling and unmarshalling operations. These are not needed. So we probably can provide the cache so that, so that we don't have to do the marshal and unmarshal operations each time. We actually had a prototype and we can see that with a caching layer, we can improve the XD cluster performance by reducing some of the unnecessary marshalling and unmarshalling. However, we're still working on that right now. The last one is multiple DB backend support. Currently, XD only has one bold DB backend. And people are discussing the possibilities to generalize this database layer so that we can have different backend database support. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at my email address shown here. Here is a list of references we use in our talk today. And thank you for everyone. Bye.